Hello and welcome back to another segment of the OVO show. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas Football YouTube channel. Today we have a Black History Month special. Basically just getting to, getting inside of your head, Ovi, mm -hmm. about some Black history. It's important. Yeah, we it learned is. School. Both of us are African Americans. Actually, Nigerian American. Nigerian American. And that's what makes this a lot more exciting. Mm -hmm. about where your family is from and your heritage a little bit yeah so uh, my family's from Nigeria uh we came over here literally like a couple months after I was born and mm -hmm. um yeah we've been in America ever since uh I visited twice it's amazing it's beautiful over there it looks a lot different but I feel like I don't know I feel like TV just doesn't really like capture how it really looks at all. And mm -hmm. sometimes it actually makes it look worse than it really is, but it's a beautiful place. I enjoy it. I hear that a lot. How long is that plane ride though? Man, that plane ride is insane. It's almost, I want to say like 13, 17 hours. I can't remember, but it's something like that. Yeah. We had to fly to Europe <laughs> and Europe to Nigeria. Whew. It's, 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 Coming, it's coming from America to Paris, but like America to Frankfurt or America to London, like that's the flight that's just a killer because you're just going over blue the whole time. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I already don't like flying, so I would not like that at all. You don't like flying? <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it. I don't like flying. I was the one on the team trips, like with my head in between my legs, just like nobody talked to me the whole time we're taking off. <laughs> every single time, every weekend. You don't get used to it. I don't care what people say. <laughs> I think but you know. getting into some Black history a little bit, mm -hmm. I want to know who influenced you. You know, somebody you may have gotten brought up watching on TV or just learned in school. Who influenced you? Mm, I mean, my scientific, but like, I think like for me, it might be like Muhammad Ali. Mm. Yeah. Just more like, you know, still dealing with that sports thing. But like, you know, he was just able to just like change so much. Yeah. And just a very, just a motivational piece in Black history. And I think like he might be like one of my favorite, you know, Black African-American like models for sure. He's, it was his mindset for me. Mm -hmm. Like every single time he wasn't just a boxer, you know, right. he cared right. about what was going on in the world. You know, he changed his name from Cassius Clay and went into, you know, being Muhammad Ali, exactly. mainly because, you know, not just also for religion, but mainly because, you know, he thought that Cassius Clay was his white given name. And now, like, he wanted to change it back to his heritage. So I always thought that that was just spectacular. Yeah, it was very interesting, for sure. And it's like, I just want to be like Muhammad Ali, honestly, just to have that type of mindset going right. into some of my races that I used to have. Mm -hmm. man if I could just look my opponent in their face and be like you're about to lose like that's a different type of confidence exactly but I, I know that you went to Notre Dame before Texas and I'm correct me if I'm wrong but it is a PWI correct. just like the University correct. of Texas is correct. and I want to know just from either school what challenges have you faced just being a Nigerian American I keep wanting to say African American but Nigerian American mm -hmm. student uh I want to say like I think like some of the challenges is like, I want to say like within myself, just first, like, you know, just going into class and you know that, you know, you look, you look a lot more different than everybody else in the class and just building that confidence to like, you know, know that, oh no, yeah, I do belong here. I want to say that that probably might've been like the most challenging for real as I like going through Notre Dame. And I think that as I like you know, went through the years, it's gotten easier and easier and just been more, a little bit more comfortable. But I would definitely say like my freshman year, going into my sophomore year, it was a little weird, especially coming from Detroit, um, coming from a high school where it was very diverse. And then just to be like, in that one sitting, I felt like that was kind of like my most uncomfortable stage for real. I want you to tell me a little bit about, because being at UT, Mm -hmm. Not sure if you know, because I know that you've only been here yeah. a year now, but um, from being at UT, there's this like African-American versus 
like African African feud. It's not. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a feud. Hmm. It's not a feud. Not a feud. This is a little dramatic, but there is kind of like a division. And I hmm. only noticed it at Texas because there's a lot of Nigerians at Texas. Hmm. And it was just kind of been like, I don't know. You guys don't really know about us for real. That's how, that's how the Africans usually are. And we're like, well, we want to learn, you know? So hmm. I really want to know where does that stem from? Like what, ha- like we all the same skin tone. Right. Yeah, I don't think I would, re- yeah, I don't really agree with all of that, but <laughs> yeah, no, nah. but at Notre Dame, I don't think it was like that for real at Notre Dame because there was already not a lot of black people to begin with and like, mm-hmm. like a quarter of those uh, black people are African, true African or of African heritage. So like, I think that with it being such a small amount of people like they kind of just you know came together and I never really liked experience any feuding or anything like that so you don't know what I'm talking about is what you're telling me yeah I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> I really, I really it. It like that okay all mm. right I'm gonna drop it then I mm. beg to differ but I'm gonna <laughs> drop it um what differences have you noticed just being at a PWI that you see you know, versus like an HBCU. And do you wish that you went to an HBCU? That's a whole big thing too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's hard to really compare because like I've only had experiences with a PWI, but like I can probably compare it to like my hometown or like, you know, like high school. And I'll definitely say like, you know, some of the differences, of course, you know, a lot more you know white people in class um campus I feel like I don't know like you kind of just get a feel that like you know like okay like I'm the only one different like the same thing I was saying for real and then like compared to you know more diverse or or more people that look like me and you like I just feel like you know it might is there's a more level of comfortability you know being around each other yeah there is like that so yeah I, I kind of say like that would be like the differences for real that mm-hmm. uh, I've experienced or that I notice but um I don't know what I would I have gone to a HBCU I mean you know my decision to go to college was you know a lot more with, had to do with football so I don't know if I would have chose the HBCU but okay. you know what I mean but um uh, I feel like I would want to experience it I feel like I would want to experience, I, I mean, I'm probably, I'm probably never going to get that chance, but, you know, I definitely feel like it would be something that I would really, really want to experience, because there's a lot of things, like, in HBCUs that, you know, you don't really see in state schools and stuff like that, parades, and, no, um, yeah, not at all, you know, things like that, <laughs> not at all, no, for I real, mean, for sure. there's a huge difference, obviously, yeah. you know, historically, Black universities, and PWIs are just like night and day, mm-hmm. literally. And right. my whole family went to HBCU. So that's what I grew up around. Right. You know, the Bama states, the, the Tuskegee states, all of them, mm-hmm. you know, the ones that you see in all of uh, the black movies, pretty right. much. Um, and so me coming to a PWI, it was definitely like a culture shock right. because, you know, I'm like, no, definitely. I think that's yeah, the where's the band? Place. Right. <laughs> No, no, that's where's the, the best band? Word. Where's the dancers? Yeah, and um, I, okay, I didn't realize that I wasn't gonna get that coming. <laughs> no, coming no, here. yeah, but I think um, I think that's the best word to describe it—a culture shock. I definitely felt like you know my freshman yeah. year, my sophomore year, like it was a it was an eye opener for sure because like like I said, like you know I'm sitting in classes with politician sons and all of the you know what I mean and like it is different it would be times like I'm the only black person in the class. So like, mm-hmm. you know, there's a, there's a level of, you know, you know, a comfortability that needs to be, you know, reached, you know, being in like an area like that or a setting like that, especially just starting out for sure. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. even me signing to Texas, I found out that the black percentage was only 5%. Mm-hmm. And I just like sitting in my classes, I saw no black people unless it was athletes 
those were the only ones I saw for a long time until I really started to get into my major. And then I started to learn or go to the organizations that they had or, you know, anything else, the parties that they had. I finally started seeing them. I was like, well, look, here's the 5%. Mm-hmm. all in the MLK building, <laughs> but <laughs> it was definitely mm-hmm. a culture shock. Culture shock is a good word to use for it. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you though, are you first generation in your family for anything? Like to go to college? No, nah, my parents is educated. They went to college. Yeah. Uh, my dad's, uh, he has a doctorate degree. So yeah. From what university? Oof, you got me thinking now. <laughs> so Ovi. <I'm>, uh, <laughs> You don't know what college your parents went to? <laughs> no, it's just that like, they went to school in Nigeria, though. So, like, I don't okay. know. Okay, that's valid. Okay, right. That's valid. Yeah. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so with that, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. I told you, Obi, I feel like I don't know anything about you. So, you telling me that your dad has a doctorate. Do you feel like there was a certain standard you had to uphold? Of course. Yeah, of course. Like, why are you not a doctor, Obi? What's huh? going on? Why am I why not a doctor? <laughs> No, my dad got it. <laughs> I didn't get that. I didn't get that one passed down. No, but uh, yeah, my family, yeah, education is definitely held to a standard. And um, you know, me and my little brother, you know, we 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 had to go through it for sure. And um, yeah, it's just something in our family that we that they hold to a huge, huge standard. And that's how it's always been. My cousins, uh, even even my family in Nigeria, like they hold it to a high standard. Yeah, it's really important, honestly, in the Black community, contrary to popular belief, is school is extremely important in the Black community, because I feel like we always have to be, you know, 10 times smarter, 10 times faster, 10 times stronger to even get on, you know, the spectrum on the same level as everybody else. So education was extremely high in my family. It was just like, no, you're not going outside today. You've got to pick up a book because you're supposed to want to be a doctor (laughs) and I was just kind of like a doctor (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm trying to run track I'm trying to go to school to run track (laughs) but that being said what does Black History Month mean to you Obi? Man it's a very very special month for me I think it you know I feel like Black history should be celebrated the whole year but you know the fact that you know there's a month dedicated to Black history I think is a beautiful thing and I think that it's something that should continue to be educated. I think that I'm, I'm of course, learning new things every day throughout the month. And um, I just feel like it's a very important month that, you know, everybody, the whole nation should at least take yeah. some type of awareness to. Absolutely. Yeah. And switching gears a little bit, since I haven't talked to you in a while, how's practice going? It's going great. Yeah. Seems looking good. Um, I saw a little bit of a spring schedule come out. Um, how are y'all preparing for that yeah we're preparing uh our coaches is getting us prepared uh putting us in different situations already getting us ready for you know when football comes and what we do best and i know that when i was interviewing child i have so many of y'all but when i was interviewing one of (laughs) y'all i know that last year was kind of you know with sark he's teaching you guys and because he's new he's really trying to learn you guys and just teach it was a teaching university kind of and mm-hmm. now it's kind of like let's apply all of it oh, yeah. so we're I want to know like how in practice has that been changing compared to last year oh no yeah we're rolling we're rolling for sure yeah and the intensity is up the volume's up um we know what we have to do uh of course we have that bad taste in our mouth from last year but we moved on yet still having a memory of that so we're rolling and um you know we want to change things and we're on the right track for sure and I've been seeing y'all on the field early, early in the morning. What time do y'all go out there? Man. Some Before days, the sun is up. <laughs> some days six, some days seven. It really depends. But we get after it. That's the goal. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. And then one last question. I've been seeing you guys pump some weight. I want to know some numbers. I want to know some numbers about Ovi. Like, what are you pushing in what? Bench press. Pushing P. Nah. <laughs> Pushing uh, P. <laughs> I just no, want to know a little something, something. Okay, I give, I give, I give you bench. We did, we actually did bench today. I think I hit three fifty five today, so that's a good number. Kilograms or pounds? Pounds. Oh, I was about to say. <laughs> I was about to say. 
Dang, Obi. <laughs> okay, and have y'all been squatting? Yeah, I've been squatting. We, we'll get to squat next week. I'll let you okay. know. About we'll I'll get to squat you know next week. Squat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And on that note, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the OVO Show.